The following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Dallas, Texas. The roads here stretch for miles in every direction. The seemingly endless throng of highways and byways both intersect and divide, transporting 7 million Metroplex residents to their destinations every day. And like these paths, in boxing, careers occasionally meet at a crossroads. At age 25, Mikey Garcia has already displayed the attributes of a fighter well beyond his years. Precise counterpunching, a finisher's mentality. That was a complete and very impressive performance from Mikey Garcia. The craftsmanship of a skilled veteran, along with a championship lineage. Is this what you can't give a fighter? You gotta be born with this. An impressive victory tonight would further illustrate that for now, the road to boxing prominence looks clear. But expectations and results do not always converge. Juan Manuel Lopez was once on the same course. With the proud Puerto Rican boxing tradition behind him, the young all-action knockout artist fostered expectations that couldn't have been greater. It's over. A tremendous first-round knockout performance for Juan Manuel Lopez. But after some startling setbacks, Juanma looks to show the boxing world that the wear and tear of the sport hasn't already taken the tread off his tires at age 29. From the American Airlines Center in Dallas, the undefeated prodigy meets the man who once held that same label. Tonight could be the turning point of two careers. Garcia Lopez is next. Everybody, I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this Boxing After Dark doubleheader. In the main event, we had expected to see Californian Mikey Garcia solidly favored to defend the featherweight championship he won at the end of last year against former top contender Juan Manuel Lopez. Events at yesterday's weigh-in have now cast considerable certainty over, uh, uncertainty, I should say, over that competition. We'll be discussing that in much greater detail with Roy Jones and Max Kellerman later on in the broadcast when we get ready for that fight. Meanwhile, in the first of our two fights, it's more or less a showcase for a rising American force at 135 pounds, Terrence Crawford of Omaha, Nebraska. He's fighting Alejandro Sanabria, a fighter who has fought 36 times in Mexico and is relatively obscure, never before seen in this country. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for this fight between Crawford and Sanabria, and you see the one-year age advantage for the fighter from Omaha. He gives up an inch in height to the lanky Sanabria, but nevertheless has a one-and-a-half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in a half pound under the 135-pound lightweight limit tonight. Tonight, Crawford, who fought his last fight at 140 pounds, has rehydrated up to 149 and has an unofficial eight pound weight advantage over Sanabria on our HBO scale as he comes to the ring. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to American Airlines Arena here in Big D, Dallas, Texas, USA, where tonight Bob Arum's top ranked boxing and Foreman Boys promotion are proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character. All bouts sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. At ringside, the three judges scoring this first bout will be Don Griffin, Jesse Reyes, and Gail Van Hoy. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Lawrence Cole. And now, let's get this party started. 
This is for the vacant NABO title, 10 rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with red, official weight 134, one half pounds. As a professional, an outstanding record, consisting of 34 victories, including 25 knockouts, only one defeat with one draw. De Ciudad de Mexico, damas y caballeros, Alejandro Flaquita, Celebria. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with blue, officially weighing in at 134 and one half pounds also. His professional record, a perfect one, 20 fights. 20 victories, including 15 knockouts from Omaha, Nebraska, USA. The undefeated lightweight contender, Terrence Bud Crawford. North side, south side, what up? Terrence, Alejandro. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules early in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands, fix up at all times. Good luck. Buena suerte. Although he doesn't have a significant win in the 135-pound division, with Adrian Bronner's recent departure from lightweight, and with Crawford's spectacular performance against Bradis Prescott at junior welterweight last time out, Terrence Crawford is viewed by many, including me, as probably the best lightweight in the world. He now has to go about proving it. Round one begins. Crawford's conquest of Bradis Prescott came on the undercard of Rios Alvarado II in Las Vegas. And that fight at 140 pounds was an enterprise that his manager Cameron Duncan regarded as a risk. Crawford said, I don't know why he saw it as such a risk. I knew I would easily outbox the guy. And in fact, he did. He has natural athletic skills. Roy Jones, how do you assess his progress so far? So far, I really enjoy seeing Terrence Crawford. I've been watching him for quite some time now. I think he's a very skillful fighter, a very smart fighter, has a very intelligent team. He has a lot of great amateur experience, which also makes him a threat in any division, whether he's lightweight or junior or lightweight. So I really like the kid. I think he's a great prospect. I'm looking forward to big things from him. As you can see, to say that he's relaxed and takes his time is an understatement. Yeah, but also he doesn't have a rookie in front of him either. You got to remember, Sanabria Sen told us that he has three more fights than his record uh, shows. So Sanabria is not a bad fighter, and if Eric Morales had him signed to a contract, he's a guy that we have never seen, but he can't be too bad of a fighter. Sanabria officially is listed at 34-1-1. and -1. He's fought in places in Mexico where they didn't even know they had places. <laughs> and, and he says, as Roy points out, that he's had three other fights. He says all knockouts. No, two, not two, out, two out of the three knockouts. Oh, two out of three knockouts, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. This dovetails with what Canelo Alvarez constantly tells us in fighter meetings, that he has nine more fights than he's been given credit for in Mexico, which is astonishing when you consider that Alvarez's record at age 21 is already the record of a 30-year-old fighter. <laughs> Crawford had, was an outstanding amateur. Cameron Duncan, his manager, signed him because when Cameron asked Mikey Garcia, who we're going to see in the main event, also managed by Cameron Duncan, when he asked Mikey what amateurs are out there or what, you know, prospects are out there who are unsigned, Mikey said this guy Terrence Crawford, who beat me easily, uh, is still out there, and Cameron signed him. The question is, of course, like with any up-and-coming prospect come contender, is how does he take a punch, how does he deal with adversity, etc. Let's turn to our unofficial scorer, Steve Weisfeld, now for a quick rundown on the referee, Lawrence Cole. Steve? Lawrence Cole is a veteran referee from Dallas with international experience. He's refereed over 60 world title fights, a couple of which were controversial. His dad, Dick Cole, has overseen the regulation of boxing in Texas for over 15 years. Lawrence has refereed such bouts as Pacquiao, Margarito, Diaz, Malinaji, and Forrest Mosley, too. Each time Terrence Crawford fights, 
he has the word Omaha emblazoned on the back of his trunks. We spoke with the Nebraskan about his native city and Carl Washington, his first mentor and coach. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, born and raised. Seven years old, running around in the neighborhood, you know, fighting, getting in trouble. Typical bad kid, you know, and the coach lived behind my uh, house. One time he seen me, you know, he asked me did I want to box, and I told him I couldn't talk to strangers. And I ran home, and I asked my mom, and she asked me did I want to box, and I was like, yeah, and then been boxing ever since. You know, we got a lot of talent in Omaha, and a lot of fighters, they don't get the recognition like other fighters. So when I put the Omaha on my trunks, it's just that I got them on my back, and we're going to go to the top, you know? Back for round two. Copy box numbers in round one. Found Crawford landing nine of 40. Sanabria, five of 34. Logical to assume they were just getting a look at each other. In round one, seven of Crawford's nine connected punches. That long jab that you see him sticking right there. Ooh, Sanabria catches him with a left hook. Twice. Right on the button. Crawford that's... comes back with a body shot. And Crawford took him pretty good. He did, but that's impressive because Crawford's a good defensive fighter. Crawford switches southpaw and gets hit. Again with the Sanabria left hand, this time a jab. Now right to the body by Sanabria, who has come alive in round two. I told you before, I didn't think Sanabria came here to lay down. He's not a bad fighter. Uh, being fought all over Mexico, like you said, Jim, in places that we never heard of. So he has to be okay. However, I think he does have a stiff job in front of him. And he's... And he's long and, and rangy and cute. He's tricky. Um, not exactly the same, but one of the belt holders in the division, Miguel Vasquez, is also a long, kind of tricky fighter. And um, Crawford and his team are targeting all of the belt holders. <laughs> we keep making the point about these obscure places in which Sanabria has fought. Maybe some of the Mexican geography experts in our audience will have heard of Ecatepec or Polanco or Neza, or Lomas de Sotelo, or Queretaro, or Tepic. But these are places I couldn't find on the map. And in, <laughs> and in each instance, he has fought there. And he has wins in these places. <laughs> and you see the way he handles himself. It's not hard to believe. In other words, those places likely Mike! exist. And he fought no, no, and actually no. won there. Able to land two flush left hooks in this round on Terrence Crawford's face. First time we've ever seen that. Back in the day when Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. was closing in on what ultimately became 93 consecutive wins, the, the frequently repeated line was, yeah, but 40 of those wins were against cab drivers in Tijuana. S Sanabria's wins couldn't have come against cab drivers because those towns aren't big enough to have cabs. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. You fight 40 Tijuana, t cab drivers in Tijuana, see what your record is. It's not going to be 40 and 0. Not at all. A lot of uh, competition down in Mexico. They take boxing very seriously. And it's been a very competitive second round. There's a good right hand by Crawford. Just missed with the left hook following up. But Sanabria tries to land every single time that Crawford touches him. Alejandro Sanabria is yet another fighter from the traditional boxing hotbed of Mexico. He talked to us about his metropolitan hometown and his relationship with his father, Alejandro Sr., a fighter with 43 pro bouts himself. I was born in Mexico City. Mexico City is a city that has lots of action, really dynamic. Since I was a child, when my father was a boxer, I started to, to notice uh, paper clippings that my father had, where what he had done, where he had traveled. And so uh, that's when I, I felt the desire to jump in to boxing. It is my first fight um, here in the US, so I want to take advantage uh, of this moment, of this fight. This fight is very important for me. And from here on out, I mean, my future depends on this fight. You know, we're not taking it lightly. 
CompuVox numbers in round two. Crawford 13 of 42 and Sanabria 12 of 43. In other words, virtually identical, but those two eye-catching left hooks early in the round by Sanabria might have been difficult for judges to overlook. I tell you, Sanabria is definitely going to make Crawford work here tonight. We're going to learn a lot about Terrence Crawford here in these next few rounds. And he's not the ideal opponent for Crawford, meaning a rising star who's a boxer and a counterpuncher ideally would have a guy coming towards him looking to initiate offense so the counterpuncher could show what's in his arsenal. And instead here, Crawford has a puzzle he needs to figure out. And the puzzle's fighting back. Yeah, it's a good thing for Crawford, though. This is the type of activity he needs to see Stop. before he challenges uh, for right. a title. So I'm very delighted to see him have to figure out how to solve this puzzle. 135-pound weight class, class has become somewhat nondescript after the departure of Adrian Broner to move all the way up to 147 for his upcoming fight with Pauli Malinaji. So there's room there for a star to emerge, and Crawford is hoping that he's the guy. He looks like the most likely candidate, but he's also got to make sure that the puzzle doesn't figure out him, which is happening <laughs> to some extent here. They're trading some really good body shots, too. Fight is really picking up tempo as they trade body shots, as Roy points out. And Crawford is trying to take the initiative and lands a straight right hand and a left hook that wobbled Sanabria momentarily. As we saw in the Prescott fight, Crawford may be a boxer, but he's got a meanness in him, Jim. He's fighting right now. And right. he can punch. Sanabria scores a rally. Ooh, Turns he, things around with the uppercut. He can take a decent punch too, Roy. And he throws a pretty good punch. That's Sanabria. But yes, Terrence Crawford takes a really good punch. Good move by Crawford. Didn't know that we'd find that out stop, tonight. Stop. This fight has gone into the microwave since a fairly clinical round one. And Sanabria is breathing really hard. I think that would uh, entice Crawford to go to the body, seeing that he's breathing so hard. Well, Crawford looks at the body, but then throws upstairs. He wants to knock out. Time! That right, you caught him with that right. Close up the guard. Yeah, don't spit there. Did he hurt you now? No? All right. Flex your waist. Flex your waist. Get away from the punches. Yeah, okay. Hey, you're missing with that, that hook right hand. Because you get a little bit too close or you're falling in. So you got to do it off a feint and keep that jab in his face. He can see Crawford hit Sanabria with a beautiful lead right hand. But it was followed by a good shot to the head right here that I think is going to hurt more so than anything else. That shot. Then he came back and threw it again, the double left hook. And I think those shots had Sanabria in a little bit of trouble. Later in the round, though, Sanabria made a little statement of his own with a couple of uppercuts on the inside against Crawford. All in all, CompuBox numbers in that round. Crawford, 18 out of 38 power punches in the third round. 47%. That's a good outfit. Sanabria, 9 of 29 power shots of his own. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it through three? Jim, after three rounds, I have it 29, 28 for Crawford. First round, Crawford was too quick, too sharp. Second round, Sanabria edged him with the bigger shots. But Crawford came back strong in round three. So I have Crawford up by one point. I agree with that. That said, um, sometimes you'll see a, an underdog that says, Copy box will say you land, he landed nine punches, and you wonder where those punches were. Sanabria landed nine punches last round. He landed some clean shots even as he lost the round. Crawford said coming into this fight he wanted to set traps for Sanabria, but Crawford's also run into a few himself. Yeah, but the only thing you don't like is how hard Sanabria is breathing. He's breathing really hard early in this fight, and against a top notch fighter, you don't want to find yourself breathing this hard in round three. 
Sanabria trying to dig his left hook to Crawford's body. A little bit earlier in the round, he almost hit Crawford with a low blow with his right hand, wound up pulling the punch because he realized he was about to hit him in the cup. And if Crawford will go to the body here, he may find out a little bit about Sanabria. Good double right hand to the body by Crawford as they were coming out of that clinch. And what he found out about Sanabria is he punches back. <laughs> Sanabria caught him with the right hand out of it. Oh, good uppercut. Interesting variety of punches from both fighters. Sanabria lands a straight left hand, or excuse me, a straight right hand down the pipe. Break! 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 Both these guys know what they're doing in there. Oh, good body shot by Crawford. Crawford has dispensed with the counterpunching here, is taking over and leading, assaulting Sanabria, trying to make a statement as round four progresses. Well, Sanabria, as you see, is going for the knockout. He's really not trying to win a, a points battle here, and he's breathing awful hard. When a guy's breathing that hard, that doesn't seem like a guy who wants to outwork his opponent. He wants to try to get a knockout. However, Crawford has taken over this fight somewhat because now he's out in front and starting to hit Sanabria with the lead pot shots. Right, now this Crawford is a different, right. different no punching, no Crawford punching, no than punching. the one who fought Prescott where he had to make sure don't get hit on the chin. Here he feels a little more comfortable exchanging and is throwing some vicious shots upstairs and down and as you said, Jim, making the fight. And he uh, switches southpaw here, something he did with great effect against greatest Prescott. He did it against Prescott to set up counter punches. He may be doing it here for an entirely different reason. In two weeks, it's the return of emerging star Gennady Golovkin. He'll be facing Matthew Macklin. June 29, after live boxing. Stay tuned for the next edition of my show, The Fight Game, talking everything about boxing in a mid-year report. Golovkin-Macklin on June 29. So pick it up a little bit and keep pushing me back, all right? Your punches got to be a little quicker. Keep the speed and the snap on your punches, okay? Everything off the jab, son. You're doing good. You got to fake him first and then throw. Did he hurt you so much? You throw the punches, dude. But you got to throw your jab. Throw your jab, a powerful jab, powerful jab. Pop it. Tommy box numbers in round four found Crawford stepping up his attack to the body. Six of his 12 power shot connects in that round were to the body after he had thrown mostly upstairs in the first three rounds. And you heard Crawford's trainer, Esau Dieguez, saying to him in the corner, everything off the jab. And in Sanabria's corner, they also wanted the jab, and Sanabria gave it to him early. They also said they want a power jab. I really like Crawford's style, guys, because for a, de a defensive-minded boxer, he's good defensively partly because he's not scared to get hit like that. In boxing parlance, he's not a scary fighter. He tries to stay responsible, but not so much that he's out of the pocket and, and causing dull action. He's willing to take some risks even as he boxes. with 15 knockouts. He Good said body he, shots there. He said he wouldn't be gunning for a knockout tonight, but could have fooled me. Looks like he's gunning for 16 right here. Good body work by Crawford in the mix of this combination as well. And that's what I mean about being a good defensive fighter. Sanabri is throwing whistling straight right hands right down the pike. And Crawford, who's been hit with some shots here, is moving his head and taking some risks. Takes a right hand. Break! Right. 
still don't like how Sanabria is breathing so heavily out of his mouth. Has an unusual mannerism, Roy, kind of gulps for air. Like something's wrong with his nose or something. I don't exactly. Know. Like there's a guy tattooing him with both hands to the body, maybe. <laughs> Could be just a natural mannerism of his that right. doesn't necessarily mean that he's in any kind of distress, but it's unusual to see a guy constantly gulping as he does. Yeah, I just think I'm not Keep used to seeing a guy fight and breathe this hard like this. Keep it up. Stop! Doesn't Fight. seem to be, be affecting his, uh, his appearance, though. Brandon Rios in the dressing room of Mikey Garcia. They share the same manager, Cameron Duncan. They share the same trainer, Robert Garcia. And you see the other Garcia, Eduardo, behind. And uh, as they pray in Juan Manuel Lopez's locker room, 130-pound world titleist Rocky Martinez is there at the left shoulder of Lopez. Puerto Rico representing in the fight game today. Did you slip? Make sure you come back with that hook or something. Oxnard right. representing in the other dressing room. Okay, sure. keep, your head, <laughs> keep your head out like there. And hey, don't think he gonna punch at you. you. You gotta move that motherfucker, man. You slip, come back with something. He pushed. On the box numbers through five, and Crawford is beginning to build a margin, at least in those numbers. 82 out of 231 overall, 35%, pretty good percentage. And Sanabria is 51 of 219. Respectable. Right behind you, right behind you. This is a knockdown. Yes, sir. Ocho. And Lawrence Cole is going to stop the fight. Good right stoppage. Right Sanabria couldn't stay steady on his feet. Body shot knockdown. No, lead no. left hook. Lead left hook. I was reading the numbers in front of me. Because the body shots that set it up, that's for sure. He took a pounding in his body throughout this fight. Oh, very seldom have I missed a knockdown while looking at a piece of paper in front of me, <laughs> but it happened there. And a lead left hook wins the fight on a knockout for Terrence Crawford. Roy Jones, he's taking a page out of your book here. Yeah, he went with the jab like he was coming with a lead jab. The kid reached for the jab, and he came around his, the right hand with a left hook, a beautiful left hook, hard punch for a guy to stop. You see the grin emerging on Crawford's face as he watches Sanabria somersaulting on the floor and realizes he may be on the verge of the KO. Here, another look. I mean, Crawford came out with a guy who could handle himself, who hit Crawford on the button a couple times this fight, and was just an aggressive boxer puncher the whole fight, took risks, savaged Sanabria's body, and finished him with one shot upstairs. Very impressive performance. There's the Crawford family, Dad Terrence Sr., Mom Deborah, reacting at ringside along with many around them. Crawford told us yesterday, that there would be quite a number of people making it down to Dallas from Omaha, and they're celebrating at ringside right now. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 17 seconds into round number six. The winner by knockout victory, he is still undefeated from Omaha, Nebraska, USA, Terrence Bud Crawford! Final copy box numbers will show the margin that Crawford was building and increasing as the fight went on. Lands 32 more punches, throws only 14 more. Excellent connect percentage of 36%. Power shots, and there you see that Crawford hit the magic number. When you land 50% 50 of, 50 of your power shots, you almost never are going to lose, although Mikkel Kessler pulled it off against Carl Frotch uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he landed 34 more power shots, and of course the last one that 
left hook in the center of the ring made the difference. Let's go to Max Kellerman with the winner. Congratulations, Terrence, on a sensational performance. You told us you weren't going to be gunning for the knockout. Could have fooled me. Well, I had to take what was given. You know, I seen that he didn't want to initiate and come to me, so I had to come to him. For a good defensive fighter, you got hit solidly a couple times. There were a couple left hooks in the second round, a straight right hand later on. Why were you hit with those punches? Because I wasn't more focused on boxing because I had to track him down. So I guess I was too aggressive at some times. The Prescott fight, it seemed you were very uh, intent on not getting hit with any of his big shots. Here we saw a much more aggressive Terrence Crawford, as you mentioned. What does that say about your style and your ability to adapt to styles? Well, I feel like I can get aggressive. I feel like I can box. I feel like I can do anything in the ring. Did you view this as a statement fight to make after the Prescott fight to keep some kind of momentum going? What was the point here? Of course, I'm always willing to make a statement, you know, and I feel that I did that today. And I'm just, you know, blessed to be here right now. Sorry. But I want to thank God. I want to thank my Aunt Margaret that's down looking for, looking from heaven, down looking after me. I'd like to thank you. Thank you. And I just blessed. You mentioned your Aunt Margaret, who you were very close to, who would come and cheer you on at tournaments as an amateur, etc. She died suddenly, and you dedicated this fight to her. What are your thoughts about that right now? I know she down there talking about send him home, but ain't nothing. I know she down there smiling. And she happy for me right now, her and my Aunt Debbie. Congratulations, Terrence. Look forward to seeing you real soon. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Max Gellerman. We're coming to you from downtown Dallas at the American Airlines Center, home to the Dallas Mavericks of the NBA and the Dallas Stars of the National Hockey League. Up next, our main event, Mikey Garcia defending the 126-pound world championship he won from Orlando Salido in his last fight. At least that was what we had expected as he got ready to face Juan Manuel Lopez, who a couple of years ago was in the position Garcia was in, expected to be the top guy in the featherweight division before he fell apart twice against exactly that same guy, Orlando Salido. So at least against Salido, Garcia's 1-0, Lopez was 0-2. That was regarded as a big difference coming in. First, let's take a look at what's coming up on the HBO Sports calendar.